One of the topics that uh, we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about this year at Advertising Week is immersive advertising. And what we mean when we say immersive are these experiences that are kind of outside of what maybe a typical online ad would be. We're so used to banner ads and, and video ads and other things that are kind of just synonymous with digital advertising. I think one of the more interesting things that's developing inside of the programmatic ecosystem is this notion of immersive advertising. So things like native, things like audio are, are really good channels inside of that uh, immersive idea, which is the fact that you've got ads that are kind of interacting with content or kind of emerged inside of the content. Uh, also with audio, you've got this immersive experience from a consumer perspective where you're going about your day listening to uh, a playlist or anything on Spotify and then having an ad served into that environment. So these are very, very different environments inside of the programmatic ecosystem. Um, that are becoming a bigger, bigger part of many marketers' plans as they try to immerse themselves in their consumers' daily lives. And what about uh, the data set that's involved with that? Is that sort of just the same as that you guys have done? Is the data set evolving? I think the data set's evolving for sure. I think inside of, it, dep it depends on the channel, but I think inside of the, the native ecosystem, you've got a data set that's very similar to, to display and video because many of those ads are served in a browser-based environment. However, with audio, audio is largely a, a mobile environment and largely a mobile application environment. So when you have large publishers like Spotify, the primary engagement with Spotify as a service is through their application. And so in that scenario, you have a lot of really, really valuable first-party publisher data from Spotify about their 100 million logged in users and their preferences and things that they like. Uh, and that's a really, really powerful data set for marketers that can be leveraged now through a programmatic uh, buying uh, platform. So tell us about the buy side, about the agencies, the brands, companies that want to be part of this. I mean, I assume everybody, but uh, what's the the client set for the trade desk that's interested in this immersive Yeah, I mean, I think when you, when you look at clients that we work with that are interested in this immersive experience, it's a lot of brand advertisers. So we have a very diverse set of clients on the trade desk platform, but we also have a lot of large agencies with a lot of large brand clients that are looking to really be involved in their consumer's day and the people that they're trying to reach and, and kind of going along throughout that person's daily journey is a big concept around immersive advertising. So I think about my day a lot. So I get up and go on the subway to work and then I'm on my laptop throughout the day and trying to engage throughout that experience from the beginning of the day to the end of the day with the end consumer is really the goal of a lot of marketers, to participate in the day of their audience. And so I think that's something that immersive advertising really allows for in both of those channels, audio, native, and others as well. And how is the attitude around private marketplaces changing or not? Mm -hmm. You know, and I know there was a big discussion about header bidding mm -hmm. and that's affecting the private marketplaces. Tell us how that marketplace is changing, in your opinion. Yeah, there have been a lot of great conversations around header bidding, um, not only this week during Advertising Week, but also just probably for the last nine or 12 months just in the trade press. There have been a number of articles and just a ton of word count around header bidding as a concept. Um, I do think header bidding is helping us evolve the way that private marketplaces and, and just programmatic in general transacts. Um, from the buy side, it gives us access to more inventory, access hopefully to inventory that's higher up inside of the publisher stack, and helps really unify the auction on the publisher side to make every Every impression available to programmatic buyers. And that's really, really powerful as more and more budgets start to move into programmatic. Cool. And um, how do you sort of, you know, being here and seeing all these publishers, um, mostly people on, you know, the sell side as it's the IAB, what do you see some, some of their needs? Um, and I know you don't, you know, how do you sort of see the, the demands for advertising automation changing? Mm -hmm. I think publishers are definitely evolving. And so you've got a, a publisher community that's working with new uh, access points to demand, like Header, um, to help optimize their own yield and, and doing things that they can leverage through those services to really do a better job of monetizing top to bottom all the impressions that they have. I also think they're innovating on format and they're innovating across screens that are allowing marketers to deliver a consistent message across multiple screens within that publisher environment. And so I think you've got a lot of uh, movement towards that from a publisher perspective differentiating on format, differentiating across screens, and then also differentiating just on the, the basic nuts and bolts of how they monetize their inventory. So across all three of those vectors, that opens up tons of opportunity for demand partners like the Trade Desk and our agencies.